In 1960, the General Conference of Weights and Measures adopted the International System of Units, or SI, which is a particular choice of metric units. This system has seven SI base units, the SI units from which all others can be derived. So there are seven main units, the rest of them are, to, are derived from the seven base units. Here are your SI base units. For length, it's the meter, symbol of a small m. Mass, it's the kilogram, symbol kg, small letters. Time is the second, small s. Temperature is the Kelvin, capital K. The amount of a substance is mole, M-O-L. Electric current is amper, which is capital A. And luminous intensity is the candela, small c, small d. Note, all other units are derived units from these base units. Chemistry tends to use many derived units, while other disciplines such as physics tend to use all strictly the SI base units. That's one reason why they have different constants between the two disciplines, because one's using derived units, the other one's using SI base units. The advantages of the metric system is that it is a decimal system. A larger or smaller unit is indicated by an SI prefix, that is, a prefix used in the international system to indicate the power of 10. For instance, milliliters. You have the SI unit of liters, and you have a prefix M for the milli. The nice thing about the SI system is that the conversion factors are all based on differences of powers of 10. So if you learn the prefixes, you can easily transfer from one to the other. While the English system, you have to know if I want to go from inches to miles, you have to know the conversion from inches to feet, from feet to uh, miles, etc., to, to do your calculations. So the metric system is a lot easier, being that it's a base 10 power. It's important to realize that the prefix is only a power of 10 and not part of the unit. This means that we can separate them when canceling units and connect the prefix to another unit in the calculation, which I'll demonstrate later. But basically what I'm saying here is that when I see milliliters uh, M and L here, I can basically think of it as terms as two separate components. And I can go ahead and cancel the liters with whatever I'm doing in my calculation and keep that milli there and connect that to something else. Say I wanted to uh, somehow convert liters to grams or something, then I can take that milli and connect that to grams and have milligrams. This is an important concept to keep in mind. As I said, I will demonstrate this later as we do a problem at the end of this chapter. Here is a table of SI prefixes. You have mega, which is a capital M, which is equivalent to 1 times 10 to the 6. Kilo, 1 times 10 to the 3rd. Deci, 1 times 10 to the negative 1. Cine, 1 times 10 to the negative 2nd. Milli, 1 times 10 to the negative 3rd. Micro, 1 times 10 to the negative 6. Nano, 1 times 10 to the negative 9th. Pico, 1 times 10 to the negative 12th. You can memorize them as such and use them uh, this way. Or I will demonstrate another way I like to memorize them that's a little easier. There are more prefixes than these, but these are the more common ones that you should memorize and be familiar with. I suggest you memorize the following conversion factors to switch between units. Where the unit, let's call it U in this case, could be anything, liters, meters, grams, etc. It doesn't really matter. It's a conversion factor from one prefix to the other prefix. One mega unit, be it megagram, whatever, it's equivalent to one million of the unit, say gram. Okay, so I would rem memorize and say that is one megagram to a million grams. One kilo unit, let's say for example liter, is equivalent to one thousand liters, or grams, meters, whatever the case may be. So I would memorize one kilo something is equal to a thousand of that something. 100 city, uh, city, could be meters, is equal to 1 meter. 
Okay. Now we're talking about conversion factors that are less than one. These are the ones with the power of 10 to the minus something. So 100 cents is equal to one of whatever unit we're talking about. 1,000 millis is equal to one whatever we're talking about. Okay. A good example of this would be 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. A million micro whatevers is equal to one. Okay. So one million micrometers is equal to one meter, if that was the unit of question. Important note, 1 times 10 to the 6 may be represented on a calculator as 1 EE6 or 1 EXP6. Basically, that time 10 is equivalent to the EE or EXP button on your calculator. It's very important that you realize how to handle your calculator and inputting that into your calculator. Okay, you need to know how to use your calculator correctly to make sure that you're doing your calculation uh, in the end, getting the correct answer. There's lots of errors that happens in calculators when trying to put exponent uh, time 10 numbers into the calculator. People make errors. So make sure you understand how to put it in correctly and get the correct answer. Let's do some conversions. Let's look at this first one. Let's try to convert 9.7 times 10 to the third meters to kilometers. For conversions, you start off with the number and unit you want to convert in the numerator. So I've got to start off whatever I'm trying to convert to something else, put that number in the numerator. So here in this case, I've got 9.7 times 10 to the third meters. So I need to figure out a way to get from meters to kilometers. Next, you multiply a conversion factor that allows you to cancel the unit in the denominator of the factor with the unit of the number in the numerator. So I need to come up with a conversion factor that I can place there and get in the denominator, and that's the one in the bottom, to cancel out with meters and convert it to something else. That would be in my numerator. Well, one of them I told you to memorize is that for every thousand meters, there's one kilometer. So you put that in. Notice is how I placed it. I want to make sure that my meter in my numerator is canceling with my meter in my denominator. And then I multiply the number, in this case it would be 9.7 um, 9 times 10 to the third, multiply that time 1 and divide by 1,000 and come up with some numeric number, which in this case is 9.7. And then I carry on what's left in my units, which is kilometers. So the answer here is 9.7 kilometers, and making sure I follow with my uh, significant figures. And in this case, the 1,000 meters to 1 kilometer, that's a uh, conversion factor, which doesn't account the exact number that I'm not going to count for my sig figs with, so all I have is my starting number of 9.7. Let's try this one. 7.85 times 10 to the negative second grams going to centigrams. Once again, I start off with that number. I need to figure out a conversion factor from grams to centigrams. Well, remember I told you 100 centi is equal to 1. So in this case, it's going to be grams. So I multiply that in. So I have 100 centigrams to 1 gram. I put it in a fashion that I can have grams cancel again. Okay, I can use that 100 centigrams per 1 gram this way, or I could reverse it and have 1 gram in the numerator and 100 centigrams in the denominator. I can use it either way, but I have to do it in a sense that I want things to cancel. Okay, If I put it that way, the centigrams wouldn't cancel with grams, so therefore it wouldn't help me. I need to make sure that I have it in a fashion to get my unit to cancel. Okay, so I got to make sure I have it. And for this case, the grams would have to be in the denominator. Answer, 7.85 centigrams. One point six times ten to the six millimeters going to megameters. Start off with my one point six times ten to the six millimeters. In this case, I don't have a direct link. I got to go through another unit to get there. There's no millimeters straight to megameters, so I'm gonna. I know I memorize milli, so I know there's a thousand millimeters to one meter. Once I get to meter, then I can go from one. Um, there's a million meters to one megameter and do my calculation. So I plug in my 1,000 millimeters, would be in the denominator, to 1 meter. That way my millimeters cancel. 
then plug in my, I know there's a million meg, uh, meters to one megameter, or one time 10 to the six. Get it to cancel, so that's how I know how which way to place it. I see what I got left is megameters. So if I multiply 1.6 times 10 to the 6 times 1 times 1, divide that by 1,000, divide it by a million, we'll get our final answer, which is 0 0.0016 megameters. Or put it in scientific notation, 1.6 times 10 to the negative third megameters. Now notice that I went from one unit to the base unit of meters, and then from the base unit of meters to megameters. Now I could have took all this and made my own new conversion factor, which would be one megameter is equal to a thousand times a million, which would give me um, one time ten to the ninth millimeters. So I could have written this instead, one megameter is equal to one time ten to the ninth millimeters, and then my millimeters would have canceled my millimeters would have canceled with my millimeters over here, then multiply my number out. That's combining my conversion factors into one factor. Now that's nice and you can do that, but you got to take care to make sure you're not making mistakes. Lots of people um, try to uh, make their own conversion factors and make mistakes by powers of tens and then that messes up the answer. So make sure that you're doing that correctly if you're going to take shortcuts in that manner. Homework five, should be able to do some conversion changes.